Some of the details coming out of what workers at the Frito-Lay factory that's currently on strike have had to deal with are pretty difficult. Um, we're gonna jump into a few of those. These have been provided by uh, Sherry Renfro, I believe it is. Is that the employee? I believe it is, yes. Um, they have a letter that was published from a worker at the plant saying, they were made to work in dense smoke and fumes during and after a fire. Because as they stated, it's just smoke. So the fact that it was a current fire, not just like leftover smoke would be bad enough, is just amazing. Um, worse still, when a coworker collapsed and died, you had us move the body and put it in another, put in another coworker to keep the line going. Like someone collapsed and died, and it was considered like an inconvenience for the line speed. That is like you don't even have to say like commentary is necessary to say that that's dehumanizing or that they're treating people as if they're just parts of a machine. That's fairly clear to everyone when you point that out. But man, <clears throat> they're trying to like control the PR coming out of this when so much of what they did apparently seems fairly indefensible. I'll, I'll have more on this in just a minute, Francesca. But, but give me your thoughts. I mean, it's incredibly upsetting, especially because it's you know. It's a snack food made for kids, you know, chips. It's like that's like people like chips, I guess. And now to see that like, you know, the dark underbelly of what happens and why, you know, be you know, in these factories is awful and, and disgusting, right? I mean, at what how how is it gotten to this, you know? And and moving like if somebody dies, that's the day, bro. Blow the whistle, go home. Everyone take a day off. You just lost a coworker, but they're yep. moving them out and treating people like robots, right? Which is, you know, it makes you realize like something's got to give. Either you need to protect workers, you need to give them their breaks that they need, you need to, you know, reduce their hours, pay them more to even do this kind of labor, make sure that their working conditions are safe. We don't even know how this person died, um, or you replace people with robots and you give us, you know, give us a, a, a universal basic income. All right. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. Well, they're working on it. Um, yeah, and it reminds me of the the Amazon story that we did a few weeks back about like that they would they would just they designed it that you would fire people, that you would burn them out, that they wouldn't last long because then you don't yes. have to worry about some sort of entrenched workforce that would expect rights eventually. Like it is by design. You are a you are a bag of blood that's an inconvenience to us. We don't want your dumb flesh and brain. Like we would love if you were a robot, but unfortunately you're not yet a robot. So mm -hmm. if you collapse, we'll move you to the side. Or if someone in your life does, we'll treat you like this. So the letter goes on to say we worked through the deep freeze, uh, struggling to keep warm and everything running. Um, oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. During the COVID-19 lockdown, a coworker's father passed away in another state. You told her since there wasn't a funeral, she didn't qualify for bereavement time. No. She had to take off two of her own days to grieve. But yeah, why not? Why would they care? Why would they care about the fact that someone just lost their father and wants a little bit of time to like the fact that they don't have a funeral? Human might say maybe that makes the grieving process more difficult because you don't have one of those sort of cultural traditions to help ground your grieving in. Maybe you need a little bit more compassion as a result of that. Not you need a taking away of the time. But yeah, they, they, the, the working conditions are terrible in terms of uh, how cold it was. Um, stuff fills up the workplace blocking walkways and exits and they just they don't even care when when it's pointed out. Um, they offer paternity leave to all employees except those at union plants. So seems like some sort of strike back against the union. And just generally, like there's more to this letter. You can find it available at the Capital Journal. But this is a company that at best tolerates the presence of employee of its employees and clearly considers them to be massive inconveniences. I mean, and this is where you get at the heart of what capitalism is um, and what it's become, which is exploitation, right? And moving wealth from working people who are literally slaving away uh, through the cold, through the heat, through smoke, through fires, and generating wealth for the capitalist class, right? So $16.3 billion, $16 billion is how much Frito-Lay is worth. You don't think they can afford wow. to treat their workers better? 
give maternity leave to the factory floor workers? No, you're tripping, right? Will they still be profitable if they did that? Yes, the problem is Mr. Frito-Lay uh, needs a fourth vacation home or whatever, right? Yeah. Needs, to, needs to buy their kid a wing at Yale so they can get in there. Like <laughs> that is, I mean, and you don't, you see it now. Look, this is not a mom and pop shop, you guys. Like that's the other thing. Like small businesses should be livid that this kind of stuff happens, right? Because small businesses can't get away with this. It's just giant mega corporations. Who, totally. who knows what the tax you know kickbacks that they've gotten over time has been? These are the fools who can get away with it. So, yeah. yeah. Hey, it's it's American. It's an American company. Yay. And the Democrats are in charge. They could do something to help, mm. which would not only increase the quality of life of all these workers, but also make them more popular. It's pragmatic as well as moral. Will they do it? I'd say stay tuned, but you already know. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.